Hello, everybody, and welcome to Real Estate Daily with the House Heroes. My name is Troy, and every day we go over the housing, mortgage, and real estate news. Today is April 5th. It's Tuesday, and let's get right to the news. Here's a CNBC report. It's Diana Olick, and she is talking about 30-year fixed mortgages crossing 5%. Now, this is according to Mortgage News Daily. It just crossed 5%. It's the first time since 2011, so in about 11 years. Now, she now they do make a mention that there were two weeks in 2018 that it had crossed 5 but we're really looking at nothing like this in the mortgage industry for at least you know a decade or more. So we're seeing it cross 5%. I'm talking to mortgage brokers. They're out there. They're kind of freaking out. And so they're trying to come up with newer products, different things. But right now, we're just seeing that 5% rate going on conventional, you know, 3% down conventional, as well as 3.5% down FHA. And a lot of this has to do with your credit credit score. If you have a credit score under 720, so you're going to see those rates and even much higher rates than that. So it's very, very important that you do watch your credit score, especially if you're going to buy a home. Next is CNBC also. It's the Fed Chair Brainerd, and she is saying that she sees balance sheets re reduction soon and at a rapid pace. So the Fed's been buying mortgage-backed securities. That's how they've been putting money into the market. That's, you know, people say they're printing money. They're actually not physically printing money. They're buying mortgage-backed securities to keep interest rates low. So as they do, they have trillions of dollars on their, their books of mortgage-backed securities. So now they want to start selling them off. And this is why it's triggered this huge you know, jump in interest rates is that now you're going to sell them off to what Morgan Stanley and, uh, you know, all those different bigger hedge funds. Well, they're not as risk, you know, easy as the Fed. So they're actually taking them in and are buying them and they want to begin buying them, but they're going to actually want much higher interest rates for them because they're not going to want to get, you know, 2% interest rate. They would have just bought them themselves and they would have sucked them up. They want them at four, five, six percent. They're there to make money, but they're also not wanting to take that big of a risk. So, with that being said, you know we're having the Fed come out and saying that they want to get get these mortgage backed securities off their their books. Now, my my big issue here, of course, is that you know it's it's a different Fed chairman every day or every other day coming out with bad news. They just can't go and meet together once a month and then come out with that news that day. They all have to get this power trip in. And so, you know, was it two or three weeks ago, we had the Houston Fed chairman. And then, you know, last week it was a Dallas Fed, Ch Fed chairman. And now we have this young lady, you know, uh, Ladle Brainerd saying, you know, now she has a whole bunch of different things that she came out with, including wanting to aggressively raise rates and, you know, dump the mortgage-backed securities that they've been buying now for the last two, three years. Here's another very interesting poll and this really makes up for it because of the fed chairman's just keep opening their mouths and of course you know the war and inflation and what's happening at the white house 81 percent of u.s adults are worried about a recession hitting this year this is very interesting because i think this is all going to be a very affected you know with the november elections the midterm elections and we're going to see a huge sh shift in who's going to be in charge now just because we just can't get it right. We went from, you know, a lower inflation to, you know, 18 months later, it's just exploding. Fed, Fed, in my eyes, you know, was, was late to the party. You know, too much money was being spent frivolously, uh, you know, when in 2020, in, you know, 2021, I should say. And it just, it just now is catching up. You know, I, I may have this saying, it's, you know, government spending, number one. Number two, you know, print money or buy mortgage-backed securities. Number three, inflation gets trickled down to the population. Four is repeat. And that's what I see the government do over, over and over and over right now. It's just nothing's changing. We're going to see inflation continue to go up. And with that being said, when rates go up, you have less mortgages, no refis. And here's Movement Mortgage. They're laying off 170 of their employees. This, they're not just the only ones. We're just seeing this across the board. More and more processors, 
you know, if you're not, if you're a loan officer that's not producing, there's a good chance you'll be laid off, you know, or just seeing the, the whole industry, the industry as a whole, see less and less people. For my eyes, this is a more normal type of market that we're going to go into, even though interest rates are high. Back in 2011, this is what we saw. 2010, we saw, you know, you know, not everybody had their license. You know, you, most of the funders had no licensing. The uh, underwriters had no licensing. So now they're getting, li they got licensed. The market exploded. They're make, they made a lot of money. And now we're going back to a normal market where the buyers and sellers are more on an even playing field where the last four years, it's all been sellers in charge and tightening the screws on their buyers. So that's what we're actually seeing more and more of the mortgage industry kind of lay off more and more agents starting to melt back into the public and getting other jobs. And the last bit of news here, of course, every day we go over Optimal Blue, which is part of Black Knight. They're going over mortgage rates across the United States. So this is a huge, you know, you know, you know, over overview. So a 30 year conforming, which is conventional, I didn't really kind of stayed flat there at 4.866, 4.87, 15 year tick ticked uh, up a little bit. The jumbo actually went down. That's one of the, the first ones that went down. Uh, the, the issue here, if you're in Southern California is jumbo rates are after the conforming rate. So literally, if you look at it, you know, you have $910,000 is conforming. And then all of a sudden, if you add, you know, 10 to 20% on top of that, you, you're looking at getting into jumbo rates, you know, somewhere in the 1.2, 1.3 range. That's where you begin getting into jumbo rates. So with that being said, that's not the majority of part of the market. And so they're trying to come up with other types of financing. Adjustable rates are one of them. You know, they're, they're just have to be more creative if they want to keep this market hot. But on the other hand, not giving out fixed rates or the fixed rates have just exploded and are, they're really not you know, what consumers are looking for, buyers are looking for, it doesn't matter if it's entry level or at the 1.3 plus, plus dollar amount. And then FHA ticked down 0.3 bips, which is pretty good. I mean, now we're kind of really flat with the conventional, about 4.86, 4.87, right around there. So that was a little bit good to see, but we're gonna see what happens today. I know, again, more Fed news and some more FUD Fed news, which is not good. But I'm hoping that, you know, rates will start to calm down a little bit. Obviously, if they're, if they're buying or they're selling mortgage-backed securities, that's not going to be good. That risk factor by a lot of these companies are just going to keep raising rates. They do not want that risk factor, and they want to balance their portfolios. All right, guys, if you like what we're talking about today, hit the like button. Otherwise, hit the notification button. When we drop these videos every day, you'll get notified. I try to make it under under 10 minutes, like a five, top five to 10 minute moment. Otherwise, you guys have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow, which is Wednesday.